Less drunk. When trying to find information about these old Super Nintendo games, I try and look at everything I can find. In the case of Wiz, I started with a GameFAQs review from 2014 written by The Sammies. Games like this make me reconsider being a collector? Well, that's not ideal. Doubling down on the terribleness, the SNES version of this game was published by Titus. Uh-oh, that's not good. It doesn't help that this is yet another mascot platformer where your main character is a tuxedo-wearing rabbit named Wiz, presumably a play on Wizard or something, although the magazine ad for the game asks, Ever feel the need for a Wiz real bad? You will. What, is that a threat? The ad further says, Check him out, he's the coolest hip hopiest tuxedo-wearing bunny dude you'll ever meet. Oh, and he also makes you urinate uncontrollably, I guess. Yeah, that's really cool. Anyway, Wiz was developed by Flare Software, woo! Back in 1994 for the Amiga and DOS, and ported to the Super Nintendo in 96, eventually getting ports on PlayStation and Saturn in Europe and Japan. This isn't just a regular mascot platformer though, it's got an isometric viewpoint, and there's some puzzles here and there you gotta get by, in addition to the usual stuff like fighting enemies and making tricky jumps and all that. Nothing special here with the controls, it's just B to jump and Y to attack, and that's it. The weirdest thing here is the movement. Not only is Wiz abnormally fast, especially for a game of this nature, but you can only move in four directions. So in other words, up on the D-pad moves you up and to the right, left moves you up and to the left, and so on. It's pretty goofy and it takes a little while to get used to, but hey, it does work. You just kind of have to shift your brain 45 degrees. You get three lives with a health meter and unlimited continues to get through four different worlds split into two or three stages each, and it's your usual stuff. The token snow level, the token beach level, and a place called Gamble Land, one of the most garish and ugly worlds I've ever seen in a game. Look, just because you can cram every possible color onto the screen doesn't mean that you should. But yeah, the quick movement and diagonal jumping here may look strange, but the game is actually very forgiving. You can't fall off any ledges, everything is kind of locked, so to speak, and the health meter is also really forgiving. Wiz is being chased by his arch enemy Ratty, and you gotta get to the end of each maze and jump into your hot air balloon to move on to the next level. The enemies here aren't much of a hindrance, in fact your biggest obstacle in each stage is gonna be the time limit. Toward the end of the game you really gotta book it to get to the end before time runs out. There's also smaller obstacles you gotta deal with, like extending bridges or destroying blocks, or getting rid of barriers in your way. So in addition to all the random crap you collect, like flags and gems and whatever, you also have to collect up to four different elemental blocks that act as keys that enable you to smash through whatever element is in your way. That's not to be confused with regular keys that are used to open treasures, and there's also rockets and potions and poisons, but none of that stuff really matters unless you're interested in spending a ton of time getting the highest possible score on Wiz of all things. Ah, that sounds kind of mean. I'm actually kind of surprised that this game isn't a total disaster considering how much it has going against it. I mean, Flare Software were the folks that made Dangerous Streets, that terrible Amiga fighting game where the fighters do this. I mean, what the hell are these people doing? So yeah, the fact that the same team was able to crank out Wiz a few years later, and it's actually not that bad of a game, that might be a minor miracle. That's not to say Wiz is all that great, it's seriously just navigating a series of mazes, smash through enemies, smash through walls with keys, all while your eyeballs get assaulted by settings that look like this, and the whole playthrough usually takes about 30 or 40 minutes. It falls on the lower end of average, but hey, sometimes that's all some people are looking for. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!